What's going on guys? Today in this video, I'm gonna be starting the process to remove the engine and transmission from my 2004 Mustang Mach 1. The first two parts was me removing the engine and transmission from the Silver GT that you guys saw in the previous videos. If you haven't seen those videos, I suggest you go watch them, but I'll give you a quick recap. A quick recap if you haven't seen the first two parts of this series. I have a 04 Mustang GT, it's a convertible. So I'm gonna be doing a Mach 1 convertible conversion. So if you want to go watch those two videos, I suggest you do so. But if you haven't watched them, that's what I'm doing. So this car needs to be backed out and I need to bring it over on this side of the garage. So that's pretty dang cool. Good progress going on there. I got the two valve four six on the engine stand. This came out of the GT. The GT and the Mach 1 have slightly different engines. This is also a four six, but it's a four valve. It makes a little bit more horsepower. Surprisingly, not that much. You would think it would, but it doesn't. Hopefully we can get that built up and supercharge it in the future. But before I do that, I have to take the engine and transmission out of this 04 Mach 1. So I'm gonna get a battery hooked up. I had to take the brand new battery that I had in it out and put it in my grand marquee so I could move it. But the grand marquee battery is charging and hopefully it's good and I can put it in here and we'll get it started up. So that's what I'm gonna do now is back this thing up, bring it over here and I'll start getting it jacked up on those wheel cribs. I got those stacked up nicely over here. And then we'll be taking the transmission and engine out of this one. And then I can really start getting some progress done on the whole build. So let's get this thing backed up and we'll be making some good progress. You can see the size difference between the one from the Grand Marquis and the one from the Mustang. This is the one I bought for the Mach 1. It's brand new Everstart Max. That's my favorite battery because I've had nothing but good luck with them. So let me get this thrown in there and we'll get this thing started up and moved. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna close the hood fully, but I am gonna close it just enough. So let's get this thing started and we'll back it out of here. Make sure there's nothing under my wheels. It's all good. Yep. Let's get it. There we go. We're going to let it warm up here for a minute and we'll get it backed out. This is like the last time it's going to ever be driven the way it is. So miss it. I never even got to drive it. That's the crazy thing. I drove it from Alabama to here and it's been parked ever since. I do have to be careful. There is a little bit of a lip on the concrete. But I set some 2x4s and 2x6s out so hopefully I don't scrape my concrete. I'm going to go real slow. Oh, I definitely scraped something. this thing man let's get it pulled in over here I need to make sure my garage door has good clearance and then I'm going to close those garage doors and we'll be about done with this part. Y'all can see how clean this freaking car is other than this seat right here.
This is the last time that this engine is ever going to run in this car, so this is a sad moment. There's a silver GT over there. I pulled it out. So it's going to be sitting a while until we drag it back in here to build that up. All right, I'm shutting her down for the last time. It's a sad moment, man. That's the last time that engine will run in that car ever. It might be the end of this car. I don't know. I might turn it into a drag car one day, but... Let's do one project at a time and let's get this freaking conversion started. I am finally ready to get the Mach 1 onto the wheel cribs. So I'm gonna jack up the rear end, and then I'm gonna jack up the front end and we're gonna get all the wheels on the wheel cribs. And then I'll be able to start working on this thing again. So that's pretty cool. So first thing I'm gonna do is open the garage door and then I'm gonna start jacking this rear end up. Then jack up the front and put the front wheels on the wheel cribs. So let's get to it. Go ahead and start laying these out. All right, the rear wheels are on the wheel crib, so that is good. I got them aligned as best as possible. They look even and straight, so I'm gonna move on to the front and get that done. I can't wait to get this garage door closed because it's pretty cold out here. And I uh, had the garage nice and warm, so now it's gonna be cold again, but let's go ahead and get this garage door closed and let's jack up that front. Okay, this lip was in my way, so I jacked it up on one side and now I have it level from the front, so now I need to pump it up and set the front wheels on the wheel crib, so let's get to pumping. Well, I'm gonna send it right there. I like that. Well, this begins the tear down of this Mach 1. So, since I tore down the GT, I'm gonna do mostly time lapses for this car because it's virtually the same as the GT was except for the engine. So the drive shaft and transmission are gonna be virtually the same as the GT was, so that'll be one big time lapse. And then once we get to the engine, I'll kind of pick up where we left off because this engine is different than the GT engine. So next thing I'm gonna do is get the drive shaft out and then the transmission. I am under the car and I'm ready to take this exhaust off. So there's two flanges down here, like right under the transmission. It connects to those long tube headers up there. I am going to repaint all this exhaust when I reinstall it or before I reinstall it. So that's where I'm at now. All right, so I have these O2 sensors loosened up already. So I'm going to go ahead and twist those off, get them out of the way. There's one. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the O2 sensors coming out of these long tube headers. I already loosened them a while back, so I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. This transmission is not the transmission that came in a Mach 1, so I'm kinda disappointed about that. But it is what it is. It's a working transmission, T45. It's supposed to be a TR3650, but I have one of those out of my other Mustang, so I'll probably try to reuse it, reuse it, but. I'm gonna go ahead and drain this transmission. Uh, I need to find the drain bolt. There it is. All right, hopefully I don't make a mess. Oof, that is brown. Golly. All right. I'm gonna let that drain out guys and hopefully uh, 
no chunks come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting close to being able to take this transmission out, but I wanted to show you guys this rigged up nonsense for a clutch cable. Had electrical tape on it, and it's got some kind of pin holding it in. I just wanted to show you what I'm dealing with in this car. So anyway guys, I'm going to get this throttle, not the throttle, the clutch cable taken out and I already took all the transmission bolts out, so that was also a nightmare. Um, a lot of bent bolts. I don't know how they got them in there in the first place, but whatever. So anyway guys, I'm going to go ahead and try to get this transmission out. Uh, I do need to take the shifter off up in the car and then I'll pretty much be able to take this off once this clutch cable is removed. So let me get into that real quick. All right guys, I just took the transmission out, so I had to take the starter out obviously. And this thing does have long tube headers. So it was a pain to work around because you can't really take the long tube headers out while the engine is where it's at. I loosened the motor mounts, tried to jack it up. It just wasn't going anywhere. So I set the transmission on this carpet here and it should drag out. Oh, I gotta slide it some more. Maybe now I have enough room. Yep. Just like that, man. Woo! That sucked. That sucked big time, man. So, I need to drop the car back down. And I'm gonna start taking this clutch out because I need to know if this car is an eight bolt crank or a six bolt crank. If it's an eight bolt crank, this is an original engine to a Mach 1. If it's a six bolt crank, it is either from an aviator or it actually might be a Mach 1 engine, but it might have been from an automatic. Hopefully, it is a eight bolt crank. So it's forged, so I definitely want that. But anyway, let's uh, let's go ahead and take that clutch out and let's figure out what it is. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this clutch off. So let's see, it's 13 millimeter bolts. Everything is 13 millimeters on this car, it seems like. So that's kind of convenient. There it goes, just a little stuck on there. A lot of stuck on there. Ah, it's an eight bolt crank, guys. Thank God. Thank God. I was really, really concerned about that because the forged eight bolt crank is a little bit more stronger than the cast six bolt, so. Let's check the clutch condition here. I mean, it's definitely used. Uh, I wonder what brand it is. Uh, I saw letters on it. Valio? Valio? I've never heard of it. Let me know if you guys know that brand, Valio. Valio. All right, this last one I'm gonna do by hand because you don't want this flywheel to fall on you. So I'm going to hold it down here or somewhere and I'm gonna carefully take this last flywheel bolt out. I'm gonna loosen it by hand here. I'm gonna grab it by the top, give it a little shake. I might need a mallet. Now, where are you? All right, I'll grab it. Whoa, that's quite heavy. The transmission, flywheel, and clutch are officially removed from the Mach 1. Thank God it's an actual Mach 1 engine. I'm really glad about that. So, because <laughs> if it was a six bolt crank, it came out of an automatic Mach 1, or it came out of a Lincoln Aviator. And that, that would have been okay too, but I really wanted the manual transmission Mach 1 engine, so that's definitely good news. So I'm going to go through this engine. I'm going to put new gaskets and seals on it. Probably not head gaskets because it does seem to be okay, but uh, we're going to do new seals, gaskets, water pump. I got the shaker and the mounts loosened up here, so hopefully that's all the bolts and I can go ahead and take this off. Ooh. 
There we go. Shaker is off. It's time to take out this intake. So I already loosened up the clamps here. So I'm gonna pull this out of the valve cover. I'm gonna slide this off the throttle body. Uh, I'm gonna unplug the mass airflow sensor. Uh, there it is. Okay, and that might be it. And that's just gonna lift up. So air intake is out. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect some connectors here while I'm right here. It's gonna be a little bit different than the GT, so I gotta make sure I have plenty of pictures. Mm, these wipes smell so good. Ah, here, get a whiff of that. It smells like orange peels. Quite frankly, pretty delicious. Do that, pop it out, set it aside. I'm gonna put that nut back on the alternator so I do not lose it. Pull that up from the power steering bracket, power steering reservoir bracket. And that runs underneath somewhere. And then this runs to the fuse box, okay. I'm making mental notes as I go along too because I don't wanna forget something important. There's a few more things that I need to disconnect, like this bracket for the throttle and cruise control and the EGR. Um, that actually looks like it's about it. The EGR, I can go ahead and unbolt and pop out this way. No, 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 no. I'm going to try to take it off all the way, actually, with a what looks to be like a 22. No, that's way bigger than 22. Okay, so I got my biggest wrench, or my second biggest wrench here. It's a 27 millimeter. So I'm going to try to disconnect this EGR. I made the mistake on the GT by not disconnecting it first, but that's okay. I had my little bitty impact here, so hopefully it has enough power to get it up. My big impact isn't needed for such a small tank. Oh, there we go. So I'm gonna screw these bolts right back where they go so I don't ever lose them. And then I'm about ready to take off this plenum here. I need to disconnect the bracket for the throttle body and the cruise control. And I think I can take the bolts out and pop that off. I took out all of the intake manifold bolts. I think it was about 10 of them. I put them all in my pocket because I'm gonna put them back where they belong after I take this intake manifold off. But let's see what I get snagged on, if anything. I'm missing something, the fuel line. Daggone it, boy. Right here. <sighs> Silly goober. All right, that little tool right there. That's how you get fuel lines off. Let me grab a rag and I'm gonna wrap it around. There's a little bit of fuel is gonna leak out, a little bit. Ew! do not smell. I'm glad that fuel tank was pretty much empty because it had 91 octane in it. Ooh, I shouldn't have whipped that. Okay, so maybe now that I disconnected the fuel line, I can take this intake manifold off. I don't know where to grab it from. The car is sitting up pretty high. Let's see if we have any luck. Oh, God. Okay. I'm gonna have to go to the other side. I think there's something caught. Yep. The uh, electrical connectors. Yeah. Maybe now, third time's a charm, eh? Pretty cool, guys. I'm gonna fill these intake ports with some paper towels, that way nothing falls into them. This belt right here is brand new. It has zero miles on it. I put this on when I got it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off. I didn't really anticipate having to do all this. I just kind of figured I'd buy the car and drive it, but that's just not what fate wanted for me. So, 
I'm going to take it back off. There we go. So I need to make sure I don't put this in the trash pile. I need to put this... I'll probably put it in the trunk with all the good parts. Yep, so I already replaced the spark plugs, but I will take them out because I'm going to do a bunch of maintenance to this thing while the engine is out. And I'm going to go ahead and get a lot of things replaced. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this other side and set these aside. Making a lot of progress on trying to get all this wiring untangled, unconnected, disconnected. Um, <laughs> Everything's just a big old mess right now, but I'm trying to get everything um, disconnected here and organized. So it's like one big harness, but you got to disconnect all over this, all over there, all over here. And like the main wiring harnesses mount on these little bolts right here. So you got to pull those off and then you got to get under the car, unhook them down there, come to the fuse box, disconnect it there. There's a lot of disconnecting. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm probably about 75% done with disconnecting the wiring harness, but I'm gonna keep at it until we're 100% done and I can get this wiring harness moved onto the windshield or taken off the car completely because we will need this wiring harness to swap into the other car. All right, so I got the coolant draining here. I didn't see a petcock on the radiator because it's not OEM, but uh, I just disconnected the lowest coolant hose right at the thermostat and I'm just gonna let it do its work. I actually need to take the cap off. You should hear a flow difference. Cap is off now. No flow difference. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to squeeze some of these hoses, push a little bit more fluid out. On the GT engine, when I removed that engine, it had so much fluid in the engine. I drained it all out, and then when I took the engine out, it was just pouring everywhere. I couldn't believe how much coolant was left in the block. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be the same kind of story, but uh, the coolant hoses are routed a little differently on this Mach 1. I'm gonna let this coolant drain and uh, I'm gonna let this drain overnight and I'm gonna come back tomorrow and keep on chugging away at this engine. I finally got all the wiring undone from the Mustang here. What a nightmare that always is, but you know, it is what it is. Um, could be easier, but you know, I'm not gonna sit here and judge the designers of the car. Anyway, the motor mounts are out. I need to disconnect a few little coolant lines. Um, I need to disconnect the AC compressor. I need to disconnect the power steering pump. And that is about it. Once I disconnect all that stuff, I'll be able to drop the car and start working on getting the engine out. Now, I do need to take off the bumper, the headlights, and the uh, header panel, or whatever this is. I'm gonna call it a header panel. Um, and then I'll be able to start taking the engine out. So probably by tomorrow, which tomorrow is Saturday, Hopefully I can remove the engine in its entirety tomorrow. And then we're gonna be making some good progress. Then I'm gonna finish taking the dash out and then I'm gonna push this car back outside. I need to put some of these parts back in the car. The car is gonna act as a storage unit for me because there's so many parts. So I'm just gonna put all the parts in this one, bring the other one back in and then start gutting that one. And then I can start prepping the engine bay for paint. And I need to start, I really need to start prepping the whole car for paint. I'm gonna learn how to paint cars, so that's gonna be a whole new challenge that I really haven't done before. So anyway, that's the progress that I've made so far today. It's about time for me to take this engine out. Now these long tube headers are probably going to give me some problems. Uh, the steering shaft runs through the uh, right side header, so I don't know what's going to happen when I start pulling on it. I did loosen the bolt on the bottom of it, but I might have to lift the engine up and try to take the headers off when they're lifted up. You cannot take them off as it sits, so um, I might have to lift it up, try to take that header off. Maybe I'll take both headers off if possible. But I'm about ready to take this engine out, so I'm going to finish tightening up my chains here, and we're going to see what we can do. Oh, 
Wow, guys, that really, really sucked. Uh, I don't recommend long tube headers on this car. They're not easy. I'm sure it's worth it, but boy, it is not easy to remove an engine with them. Anyway, I'm going to finish getting this completely out. I just need to roll the crane back, and we're going to be done for the day. So let me do that, and then we're going to start working on something else. Woo! It's about time for me to start gutting the interior of this Mach 1, so I'm going to get started on that very, very soon. So I'm pretty much going to get some lighting set up on the inside. That way you guys can see what I'm doing. And uh, we're going to start taking the seats out, the console out, the carpet out, the back seats out. What I will be leaving is probably the headliner because that won't work in the convertible car that we're swapping all this, all of this into. But I will be taking the dash out later on too. Um, so once this is gutted completely, like I'm done with everything on this car, I'm going to move it outside. And then I'm going to bring the convertible GT back inside, gut that car and then put all of the non-usable parts or the parts that I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna put it back in the Mach 1 because this is gonna be a parts car. I'm gonna sell it all as one. So let's get some lighting stuff and I'm gonna start gutting the interior of this Mach 1. So let's get into it. All right, so I've put the light on the other side of the car there on the inside, so that should give us some light. I have parts everywhere in this car. I got this, this is the hood cowl. Yep, cowl assembly. Uh, the trunk is filled with parts, but I'm going to keep them in there until I build the car. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this out, give us a little bit of room. That is a brand new hood cowl. China, uh, China. <laughs> it's a brand new plastic piece that goes right here. So, <laughs> China. Anyway, I need to clear some of this stuff out, some old documents from the old owners. But I'm going to start with this passenger seat. So it looks like I'm gonna need a 13 millimeter socket. So let me grab a ratchet and a 13 millimeter socket. And it's usually like four to six bolts to take a seat out. So hopefully the passenger side won't be too bad. I know the driver's side is electric. So it might need a little bit more work, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this seat taken out. Give us a little bit of room. And then we'll work on the other seat and then get the center console taken out and then the back seats. So the interior is gonna be pretty easy to gut other than the dash, this Mach 1 dash is in really good shape uh, so I'm gonna swap that into the GT car I do believe it's a different color this is a dark gray dark charcoal color so I'm definitely gonna swap it over and it's obviously got the appearance package which makes this like silver and then the door oh, what do you call these door door locks they're also silver so that's the appearance package so anyway let me go ahead and start taking this passenger seat out I took all four seat bolts out, so now this thing should just pretty much come right out. So let me go ahead and grab it and move it. It's not too heavy. Just like that, and the seat is out. So the next thing I'm gonna take out is probably the driver's seat. I don't know if I can go ahead and take the rear seats out or not, but uh, yeah, I might go ahead and try to take the rear seats out. I don't really have a particular order when gutting things like this, so. I'll probably just go ahead and take out the rear seats. So I might go ahead and try to take these rear seats out, or at least the bottom part, because as far as I'm aware, this thing is pretty easy to take out. So I'm just gonna lift up. And it's that simple. And this rear seat is in really good condition. It doesn't look like it's really ever been sat in. So this is pretty valuable, but I'm obviously gonna reuse it in the conversion. So I'm gonna set this aside. That's the easiest thing I've ever had to take out in my life. Okay, so I'm pretty much going to go ahead and take off this shifter bezel, the shifter ball, uh, and then I'm going to have to start taking out all the nuts, bolts, and screws that hold this center console in together. And then I'm going to drag this center console out, then take the driver's seat out, and this thing is going to be almost gutted. And then I'll be able to take the carpet out. So let's go ahead and take off this shifter ball. All right, I'm gonna pull this little skull cigarette lighter thing out. I don't smoke, so I don't need that. Uh, and this shifter bezel, it pretty much pops out. You gotta be careful though, these four plastics do suck. And this is a Mach 1 shifter bezel, at least this aluminum ring around it. And then I gotta disconnect the cigarette lighter harness. <clears throat> Maybe. 
All right, I got everything disconnected, all the wires, all the nuts, all the bolts. So what I needed to do, and I couldn't figure out there for a minute, is to pull this e-brake as hard as possible to try to get it as vertical as possible. That way, once everything is disconnected, this center console will just lift right up. Now I'm stuck on this boot, handbrake boot. I thought I disconnected it all the way. There we go. Just like that, the center console is fully removed. I just took the driver's side seat bolts out and uh, disconnected the electrical connection that moves the seat electrically. So this driver's seat is ready to take out. So let's get this thing taken out. I can't open my door very much, but hopefully I can get this thing out without tearing everything up. This car is beginning to look almost gutted. That light is bright, I'm sorry guys. Okay, so a seat belt bolt is a T45. I was close enough. Oh no, I need an adapter. Wow. So the seat belt's disconnected on this side. I'm gonna pull it up from this tab. Pull it up from this trim piece. Whoops, my light fell. And like the other side, these little white clip things. I need to go ahead and put these uh, seat bolts back where they go. This car is one big surprise. <laughs> oh yeah. This is gonna fold back. This is the passenger side. Oh, that was kind of came undone. Let me throw that in the back with the other stuff. I'm just gonna pull down, keep pulling. There's a computer. It looks like Diablo. What's Diablo? Tell me what Diablo means, guys. I have no idea. All right, there it is. Lots of damage and rust, and it looks like it's been at a beach. It's like they dug it up from a beach. <laughs> Pretty interesting stuff, but uh, I'm not gonna dwell on it because this thing is getting gutted. And I'm taking any good part and using it and anything else I'm selling, so. I'm actually making a parts list of what everything is worth. So I'm gonna see what I kinda would get if I ever parted it out, which I'm not parting it out, but I wanted to see how much money I lost on this buy because I know I lost a little bit at least, so. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, I'm done for the day. I went ahead and pulled that carpet and uh, I'm gonna call it there, guys. But anyway, I'm gonna continue this stuff tomorrow and hopefully make some more progress tomorrow because I feel pretty good about it today. It is time for me to start doing some organization. I have parts everywhere, tools everywhere. I think I have just about every single tool that I have out on the floor somewhere. Not all of them, but most of my sockets and wrenches are for sure. Parts everywhere. So I'm gonna start cleaning this place up. I'm gonna start putting some parts back on the car. Some parts I had to take out just so I could get the engine out, like the crash bar and the bumper. Uh, the header panel I might go ahead and put back on. There's a lot of things I'm gonna put back on. And then I'm gonna label everything else and just throw it back inside of the car because the car is virtually gutted on the interior so i'm going to organize and use that as a storage unit and then 
I don't know. I haven't even processed everything yet, so I don't know what the next step is after organization. But uh, we're definitely making some moves here. I'm going to try to teach myself how to paint a car because the GT I need to paint. I think it's a lot cheaper for me to learn instead of paying someone $5,000 for them to do it. And I've always wanted to do it. It's just one of those things that are pretty intimidating. But if I know how to take a car apart and to rebuild engines, I think I can paint a car. But it's one of those things I'll have to master. Anyway, guys, I'm going to start organizing all these parts. All right, this dash is about ready to come out. So I got all the bolts, all the harnesses. I got some blankets underneath because I'm going to be taking this out by myself. I do not have a helping hand. So I have to take it out by myself. So I just use these blankets as like a little protector in case I have to set one side down. But anyway, yeah, I got all the bolts, all the trims. I believe I have everything out. That way I can take this dash out. So it should come out on its own now. I'm gonna do a little bit of pulling and tugging and hopefully this thing slides out real nicely. I'm gonna take it out on the passenger side and set it down on the ground. But this is a big step because once this is done, I'm gonna be completely done with this car for now. I might put the old GT parts back in this car and then sell the rest as parts when I'm done. But for now, I'm gonna take this dash out and call it there. So let's get this thing out. I am about to go ahead and push this orange Mustang out of the garage. So this thing's pretty much gutted. I have all the parts inside the garage here. So I'm gonna just let off the e-brake. I'm gonna go ahead and push it outside. I'm gonna start cleaning up an area over here. That way I can prep the engine for paint. So I'm gonna degrease it, uh, polish it with some steel wool and some sandpaper, get it all clean. We're gonna paint the engine. I'll go over that very soon of what colors I chose. So I'm gonna get this area prepped where the car's sitting now. So I do need to remove this car to get that prepped. So I'm gonna go ahead and just roll this thing outside. All the windows are up, everything is sealed, and there's a few parts in the trunk. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of here. This thing is gutted all the way. Ah, <sighs> it's sad to see. Push this thing out of here. <sighs> Perfect. Wow. We can see all this stuff that's been dropped. Ah, is that a 10 millimeter? Anyway, guys, I am done with this video. Here is a sneak peek for the next video of what we're going to be doing. Anyway, if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on post notifications so you get a notification every time I upload a video. Follow me on Snapchat and TikTok at DBA Ken, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And peace.